Sometimes prayer is like cooking food. It's not about putting the food on fire. You have to leave the food on fire until the food is done. Welcome, and you already know my name is Shibomi, and this is Slice. This is the second episode of this wonderful, wonderful show. And today we're going to be talking about something very, very interesting. And not just that, I'm here with two wonderful people. And um, Wale is here, and uh, Yinka is here. Thank you very much for having us. We're so glad to be here. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course, Yinka, this your clothes is very, very Africanish. Yeah, quite bright, isn't it's it? It's like some two million dollars <laughs> kind of garment. You know, hmm. coat of many colors. <laughs> wow, this particular so, series, especially in 2022, has been very, very, very wonderful. And it brings out a lot of emotions from um, people. Um, like you've previously seen the videos and everything. What would you say, and I'm starting with Yinka first, ladies first hmm. so i'm sorry we think what would you say emotional baggage is to you or what would you say emotional baggage is to everyone like you know who's watching this um okay simply put i think um, emotional baggages are those um heavy weights you've take, carried in your mind in your soul yeah um that have their baggages because they're obstructions to you actually enjoying yourself the way you ought to so their yeah. baggages because they inhibit you from, you know, from you enjoying yourself and from others enjoying you. Yeah. So you being able to give the best of yourself, your best, happier self, your best, most productive self, um, because of certain things that you probably have, you know, experienced um, along the way, and these things have caused that mind, you know, emotional injury, you know, which they then has led to those baggages that we keep carrying and. You know it's just something that we just carry along our experiences as we go along life yeah know. yeah because it, it, it's a very it's a very strong topic and the reason why we want to discuss this is because most people in their right mind were like nah i don't i don't think i have baggages then wasabi starts and they're like okay i think <laughs> I, I think i'm carrying a very very big knapsack now yeah. of baggages i was like that so when i when i you know when person was talking about baggages baggages, baggages i was like oh, maybe i had baggages but i think it's done, but I later realized that there seemed to be some certain level of baggages, and um, Wale can actually relate with me on this. Uh, so I, I, I lost my sister in 2020, and I carried the emotional baggage that um, anybody can die. So why stress and work, 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 work when tomorrow I can just be gone? So uh, I mean, Wale is a very strong person, one of the strongest people I know, and. Um, he has a side of story, especially when you lost your dad. So, oh, yeah. how how was that for you? So for me, my, uh, I lost my dad at the point where there were a couple of things that were in the pipeline. So my dad died two weeks before I was supposed to visit him. We were supposed to discuss a project and he was supposed to in introduce me to some people. And then he died on a Friday morning after NLP and wow. Pastor says, Oh, jump because good news is coming your way. And then I leave NLP and I'm called that my dad died this morning you get yeah. it's just that kind of thing but it took me a while because i had to deal with i had to deal with his loss i had to deal with but on top of that i had to be strong for my siblings i had to be strong for my mom so since he died my siblings and i we've been holding meetings every week every wednesday yeah. and before then we used to hold meetings every other day to discuss and do a lot of planning and all that. And I realized that I was the one who was being strong for everybody. Mm -hmm. I was the one who was being, I'm not the oldest. My family is quite big and all, but a few months after, I just realized that I would sit down and I'll just start remembering him and I would burst into tears. My wife, my wife, my wife could not even deal. She didn't, she couldn't understand the way I felt about it. She couldn't understand what was going on. And I carried that on. And sadly, I lost my business partner too. Wow. Same year, wow. during the week of my dad's burial. And it was just a lot to handle. So it took me a while. When Pastor B started talking about baggages, I could relate because 
I started dealing with the loss of my dad. My dad died in March. My business partner died in July. I started dealing with the loss in November. And it was just different because all the while it was like, oh, nothing was wrong. Yeah. But I just started dealing with it in November. I can't say I fully dealt with it because I'm still in the process of healing. Of healing. And healing from not just the fact that there was loss, but also from the fact that, okay, something has happened and yeah, we can move on with life and all that. So yeah, because yeah, because it's it's it, because this is just one side of emotional baggage, mm -hmm. and you know because we're channeling it now to relationship. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, you know, when I lost my sister, mm -hmm. I wasn't even thinking marriage. So I keep telling people, marriage came to me as a surprise. It was something that was packaged already, but you know, God knows best. Yeah. And when I lost my sister, I just lost every sense of, you know, what is this life about? Why are we here? But, you know, the emotional baggage was at a point restricting me from the gift God wanted to give me, which was my wife. So I wasn't thinking about it. My mindset was not there. Everything was not there. I was just thinking, what kind of life is this? And you know, exactly. God was saying, I know you're carrying baggages. This bag is heavy right i'm the giver of life i'm the taker of life but let me fix you and he needed to just take the bag away and give me something like that but um when that came and he took that baggage mm -hmm. and i later understood that in as much as we have a lot of baggage there's still an opportunity for us to heal but people yeah, just find it hard to heal so in in marriage now, Yinka, I don't know why I'm that because you like we would like to have a more feminine touch to the emotional about it. How does because we don't know what goes on in the minds of women. <laughs> yeah, we but don't. you I mean you're a lady and you're a very strong woman, you know, spiritual and everything, hard working. So what goes on in the mind of the average woman when it comes to emotional baggage? I don't know if there's an answer to be a one size fits all because it really depends on the individual at the end of the day and what your experiences have been. But because women are naturally emotional beings, um, it will be a lot harder um, to manage. And when you have baggages, it's so easy to uh, for those things to reflect in your interaction with your spouse and also your children. So if, for instance, it's an issue of maybe when growing up, um, the way your mom has you know, interacted with you or maybe the way you've seen your mom and your dad interact, it's very easy that when your husband does something that in your mind begins to look quite similar to what you have experienced, it's already triggering you, you know. So you get, so the, 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 the um, sort of results and outcomes of that is someone nagging, someone always temperamental, you know, because so, we will always show out our emotions as ladies. So um, it's either nagging or crying, before you said one to three and then the guy is wondering but what have i said what you have understand? i done yeah. and then one other major thing is um we pile things a lot yeah. so when you've done one thing already the woman's mind is going to say okay he did this now because that's when i spoke to him and then after that so we've created a whole scenario and the whole even the logic and the reason behind why he has done something and you have the man has absolutely no idea about you don't know what has I've built um, <laughs> so a skyscraper in my head yeah. over over something as little as you're going to bed and he turns his back yeah. to you and you are wondering when did this one start? Why are you turning your back to me? Or um, I wanted to cuddle and the way you held me is not the way you usually would wrap your hand yeah. around me. And, and then you come the problem because you're not remembering during the day what happened. Well, maybe when it, you, you start linking things that don't matter. And yeah, why, because the reason why I'm asking it is because men are more logical mm -hmm. by default. Women are more emotional by default. So I used to have a friend. I used to crack a joke back in the days that you know when a woman, when the chemical in a woman's head mix together, they tend to. I don't know how true that is, but it's my friend who. It's not me, but yeah, we're talking about relationship, and we've seen a couple of people, um, especially women that have suffered. And in their suffering, there is a part whereby there is a pause in heaven when it comes to distributing blessings. Because why? God wants to give them blessings, but at the same time, he needs them to heal. And after healing, now needs them to 
handle the blessing and not only handle the blessing but also maintain it so a woman can say okay you know what i've forgiven you but the maintenance process now starts in the relationship and pastor b was saying something about you know the baggage thing was you can heal of everything he spoke about in the emotion i mean those first two weeks is you can heal you can heal it's possible to heal it's important to heal it's i wouldn't say the word compulsion but it's very very vital to heal because everyone's life is wrapped around that healing process that you need to go through and um, i remember someone telling me something that it took her a while to heal from my emotional baggage but she literally used the baggage as a weapon i will let me use the word tool because weapon is kind of bad now a tool to actually heal so how did you come out of your emotional baggage when you lost your dad and how did it in what way affect your marriage okay so um um there's something very profound that pastor b has said in this in this season and it's so someone will watch and say oh i've heard that before yeah we've all heard it before but sometimes some words are just going to hit you afresh and so he says we must be able to find the message in the baggage and i think that's where it is basically because a lot of times we go through stuff and we don't know why we're going through it we don't know what it is to what it means we just we're just going through a lot of hurt and it is just holding us down holding us down recently i was watching i was watching something on social media or so and someone said the same thing in a different way he said your memories are only as useful that God did not make us to retain memory. God made us to retain memory to learn a lesson. Once a lesson is learned, we can discard the memory because the lesson would always remind us of the memory without stress. And that's basically it. So a lot of times we'll go through stuff like losing my dad. It was losing my dad and my business partner same year, close to something big at the same time. It was quite frustrating because it almost felt like I was angry with God. I felt like God was... God was intent on punishing me over stuff and so for a while I had that baggage of God just wants me to live this kind of life he doesn't really want me to get this kind of life as well and to be successful and stuff and so he affected the way I related with him but every now and then I would be reminded of God's love and remembering God's love over time gradually started to make me remember that see God is my father and he will not withhold anything good from me. And then I started to see how sometimes we, what we go through, it's it's a preparation for where we are going to be. Mm -hmm. And I know that going through the process of burying my dad, it helped me to see the kind of man he was. And I began to understand a lot of things that were baggages for me growing up. I didn't grow up with my dad always being there. So it was satisfying to see that my dad wasn't always there for me, but he had this impact on so many people that you begin to see what it means to leave a legacy. Sometimes we just think, oh, we just had children, but it's beyond that. Being able to touch your community, being able to touch so many people, so many lives, and you begin to look at it that, wow, it's beyond just the daily thing. So for me, dealing with that baggage was accepting that, okay, this thing is real. And then being willing to let it go because trust me sometimes you go to baggage but because it's familiar you keep on holding on you mm. keep on holding on but the moment you begin to see the message in it 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 just it just has a way of shifting you stop being the baggage you carry it starts being the badge you wear because now that, that badge is telling a story mm -hmm. it's no more the baggage that holds you back mm -hmm. so let us take a few moments and watch this clip praise the lord hallelujah Okay, um, when I was growing up, I saw my dad always hitting my mom to the point that she, she fainted one time and I thought she was dead. My dad went... How old went, were you when that happened? I was... Just um, play part. I don't want to play song. I was no. like eight, nine, there about. Okay. Yeah. So my dad was actually doing very well when he was working and he was working he was making money but he didn't when you see him when people see him outside they're like oh this man is taking care of the children take care of the family but he doesn't drop anything in the house 
and my mom didn't go to school as her then, so she had to push herself to school while in the marriage. So he was always tormenting my mom, so she had to push herself to school. She saw herself How did that school. make you feel as a child, seeing that? <laughs> I felt, I don't know, but I, I really, I didn't like my dad. I didn't like him up to now. How does this impact how you see men? How you see fathers from a very sincere place? I won't say all men are the same though, but I still believe there are good men out there. But how does it impact how you see men? So the primary way you see men is like my potential father, son. When you date, do you struggle to trust? Yes, I do. How did I know that? From where she's coming from. But that's the depth. When I said the hurt will turn you into who you're not. And the reason why she has to fix it is this. Two reasons why she must fix it. Number one, if she's not careful, that mentality will make her attract such a man to her life. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And the second thing is this. It will become a cycle for our children. Let's start with the fact that we could not capture every story on that day. And if you look more on the, the, the experience side, I noticed most men could not speak. Society has taught us that things like this makes you look weak. You don't, don't cry, you don't everything. But I was so happy when one of the guys in one of the service came out and said that I see women as trees and it has affected me and you know, raped at a young age. And I actually went back home and I went to ask some guys like, do you actually have emotional baggages and everything? And you, I was surprised to see how much some guys had baggages and it shaped them. I actually have a friend. I just of recent that I knew that this, the reason why he's like this is because this guy is coming from a place whereby he carried it right on his head. He carried it right on his head. And the reason why I'm saying is I can relate is because it's just recently for me that I've actually had the experience to actually share my emotional baggage. And not because I choose or I have the courage to share them because I saw it as a tool to help other people. So. Um, 2012, I, I come back, I, I get back from school from the UK and I met this girl and very wonderful girl, you know. She was already a wife doing girlfriend, in, in girlfriend status. At that age. At that age. So, I mean, she was already a wife. You know when you had a girl that would come home, she would um, do dishes, she would wash, warm my mom's food. My mom was like... This house is not the house I rented. What's happened? And, you know, we'll just say, oh, there's this girl. And my mom, you know, began to like her and everything. Then in my quiet time, I realized that, you know what? Something is wrong in this relationship. Good girls like this are hard to find. Could it be that this girl is acting in it? Could it be that this girl is just doing something to tie me down? So the African mindset, the societal mindset that there are no good girls in society came in. And I ended the relationship. And this is where the emotional baggage came in. The emotional baggage came in in a place whereby I felt devastated because I saw this girl broken. And I knew that a million, I'm sorry, would not heal her. So I saw her broken. I was like, no, it felt like I killed somebody. But on the other hand, on my end, I had the story of, bro, you broke someone's heart. Do you want to go into another relationship? Remember what goes around comes around, right? So do you want this to happen to you? So I carry that baggage since 2012 to the day I met my wife. So that was 10 years. 10 years of saying, you know what? This marriage is not for you. Just be there. Do what you have to do. Be single. And in that 10 years, it didn't give me the opportunity to understand the woman. It didn't give me the opportunity to understand how relationship work. If I understood anything called relationship, probably I'd watch a movie, I read the Bible, or I had counselors and mentors, but first-hand experience was not there. Because why? I just carry baggage. 
and I carried it, then compounded my sister's death and everything. So a lot of people are going through a lot. And I know you, I mean, you, you, you have this mental figure to so many ladies, Yinka, and how would it feel or how does it feel? Or what's the process for some people to actually heal? Because I know you work here with a lot of ladies and you know a lot of ladies. So how do you help them out when it comes to emotional baggage? The process um, which, you know, helps so much is, you know, the power of your words and confessions. You know, confessions. And that's something that I personally also went through myself, you know, is getting scriptures and actually start feasting on those scriptures yeah. to change the mindset because it's the mindset shift that we're talking about here now you have to re orientate your mind to say that okay i'm good enough i'm beautiful i can love again you know yeah. i'm an amazing person um, my future is not determined by what has happened in my past yeah. and that was the process that we said it, and it doesn't happen that you get the results in one week in two weeks no it actually takes a while because you're literally trying to retrain your mind. You know when the Bible says, Transform you know, by the renewing of you your begin mind. renewing your mind. You know, yeah. I, I, if you recall one of the services, um, the lady who who stepped out and um, the first thing she said, the negative thing she said was, "I can never." You know, she used those words, "I can never." Mm -hmm. And immediately, Pastor B cut off and said, "You see, this you, you can't use such words anymore. Yeah. You can't say I can never." Immediately, you say, "I can never. I am not." That's the end of it. Exactly. You know, like how they say there are no good men that can never love, nobody can ever use my head. You know mm -hmm. those very popular, and that is what will just be shaping their lives, that truly speaking to be that way. So the healing process is retraining your mind, and usually it's with your words, because that's how you change how you think. Yeah. And one very easy way is, you know, I said to her, go and get scriptures. Go yourself, pick the scriptures that you want. Google it. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. Exactly. Pick scriptures that have to do with emotional baggage or healing from it take it you will see it it will pop up you pick the ones that resonate with you and then start speaking take it like tablets morning after evening or do morning evening if you feel as if it's too stressful at first and then as you're saying these things your mind and to be honest even now she's so it's not just about that her thoughts about relationships has changed but the confidence that she uses to do regular normal operational things around it's totally different. Like I look at her right now, I just smile. This is a totally different person. This is not the person, you know, she was so shy, so shy and so reserved. She's so confident. Like she's so confident. And that's for me, you know, when you have that kind of aura, then you start attracting the right guys to you. Because now when she, she steps out, you know, a man can see. But if you're in that shadow of the baggages and all the mental torture, you don't even attract the right kind of men. Yeah. Instead, you just look like a prey. So you attract men that want to prey on you. But when you have healed and gone through that process and you've renewed your mind, you're confident, you sound like who you are, a woman, then you attract the right kind of men. Yeah. Why we need to discuss it? Because most guys or most ladies will jump into a relationship but would not ask the question of what do you carry in the Nigerian term now? Or what are you carrying? Because I've seen some guys, and as Pastor B was teaching the emotional baggage, just took me back to when these guys actually met their girlfriends, or you know, back when they were dating. Because we enter with the mindset, oh, I love this girl, I like what she does, I like what she does. But at the end of the day, there's a dark side to everyone's life. How well are you fixing that that dark light? Because um, I know uh, a couple of ladies that had absentee fathers. Their reaction to how a man or how a man uh, should control them or a man should talk to them is very strange. And it's so surprising in this part of the world, in this part of this, you know, women are mostly affected. Yeah. And with the honest truth, I'm an advocate, and I keep saying this every time, that culture and religion has caused a lot of damage to people. And it has helped people to carry baggages. But this is why we exist, to bring true Christianity now. Because there's a, there's a, there's a part of being a Christian and a part of being a child of God that will help people. That's why we advise people, join a small group, you know, you know, serve in church. There's always somebody that is ready to listen. And what thing I took away from the, the emotional baggage thing that we've done over the week 
is that it gives me a good sense of assurance that I must be the best father that I can be. I must be the best parent I can be. So I look at my emotional baggage time or my era and I realize that I'm just, it gives me the motivation to become a better person and a better father. And you know, um, I, like I told my wife as well, I said, no matter what, whatever it is we've gone through in our lives, we cannot whatsoever take this and hand it over to our children. In fact, as a matter of fact, my, myself and my wife, we spoke and we said, you know what, for the next, let's say three, four months, let us focus on godly parenting. Like, you know, there's, there's a parenting part, there's a godly parenting part, because I want a life whereby my child wouldn't wake up and say, I remember when daddy fought mommy, or I remember when daddy shouted on or when mommy, I don't want them to even have an issue. I want them to find it hard to say that, I don't think I've seen, I've, I don't think I've, I've seen daddy fight before. And these are the kind of things that, you know, we need to, um, to, to transfer to the next generation. So, you know, we're just going to close because I mean, next episode, fantastic. Trust me, you're going to enjoy it. So Yinka, what is the final advice you're going to give to young ladies? especially the ones who are going into a relationship or who are in a relationship that carry this bag in this. Well, I'll say this, this advice goes really whichever way, lady, guy, um, is first of all, start from self-awareness. Um, I always say this, that you can't resolve an issue without first of all, and then find that that exists. And that's usually the starting point for many of us with all the baggages that we carry. So that's where the red flag comes. Yes. So identify that there is an issue. Yeah. Right. Know whatever it is. Um, and know that it doesn't define you. Look into the word for your true identity. Embrace that, and then you're free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll I'll say um. To anyone, to anyone, sometimes your baggages may not be negative. It may be just too much of something. So some people have enjoyed too much love, and they just feel like oh, out there everyone is gonna love me the same way. No, mm. it may not be the same thing. So the baggage you may carry may be what someone else wishes they had. And all, but in, in all things, we should just always remember that no matter where we are in life, the most important thing is God loves us. And whatever we have been through and are going through, the most important thing is we are going through it, it's through, which means we are not staying there. And God's plan for us is bigger than what we could ever imagine. Who would have thought that a, a young boy who had a dream that he would be great someday, who went to the prison, who went to all kinds to all kinds of stuff was sold into slavery will become prime minister and will be the one who will save his generation who would have thought that about joseph so um no matter what we should just remember that some when we are able to identify our baggage and we can look in the mirror and say okay this is my shortcoming obviously there's a way there's always a way out there's always a way out either going through scriptures going through therapy, talking with people. Talking to your team leader, the small your, group, exactly. which is very important. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's why those groups are important. Yeah. So it's, it's why community your community leader, your HOD, your team lead, your assistants, it's just important because at the end of the day, you realize that you're not doing life alone. And that thing that seems so big for you, maybe you're not the only one who's going through it. Mm -hmm. And someone else maybe got, went through us and got got out of it and is doing better it's been wonderful having you guys here the lady with the coat of many colors and you know wally you know <laughs> in the lucky church here yinka is a phenomenal lady who handles all the ushers wally programs guy awesome guy and you know this is this is this how real right <laughs> it's how real. yeah so you can heal drop the bag and keep it get it going keep going keep going my yoke is light god's yoke is light so you can heal if i can heal if wally can heal if any other person who has gone through it can heal you as well can heal if you need help to heal you can join a small group you can join a small group in your area in your region wherever you are in the world if you are watching me from the online community there's a small group for everyone and you can always join, you can always talk to someone and someone is always ready to be with you. And next week is going to be awesome. We're still on the relationship and the marriage series. And it's just going to be a phenomenal time with Pastor B. 
So always remember, grace, 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 this is your story. We'll see you again.